need a film crew to like follow me around and hold the camera. Yanko already went in the van. I opened the door for a second. He was like, I'm out. You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. Welcome back to the channel. So hands down, these guys that are at Spring Rebuilders are, they're top notch. So my brake drums for the Mac, they got me some other things in the past. Not exactly sure. Brake drums and they just got me shock absorbers um, for the front. They were like, hold on, let's look at it. Cleaned it up. They're top notch, so appreciate them. But we're gonna dive home now, and we're gonna throw some things together. See how far we get on our list of items to do today. It is uh, almost five o'clock, so we better get going. But appreciate you guys watching along. We pulled over here. So, I already know my corn is a failure. I got five acres of it. I'm gonna, when it starts raining a little bit, I'm gonna disc it. And we're gonna put triticale in. I got some triticale. Well, Frank has some triticale. Gets 600 pounds. I'll put it on with the rolling basket and air seeder. Um, yes, the rolling baskets are mine. The air seeder, the hookups are mine. The motor's mine. So anything expensive on it is mine. So I'm just gonna buy out the rest of it. So I have that because I think that might come in handy in the future. And I really, the rolling baskets are mine. So, but in my lease, rental agreement with that landowner it says cover crop has to be on by a certain date so it's the u.s government that owns that property so we're gonna do that at some point we'll just disc it under put more organic matter in people said oh you gotta chop it, you gotta chop it honestly there's no nutritional value and it's not worth running over there to do it but let me show you how most of the corn looks like around here because somebody did say well when you're in iowa oh that looks like drought stuff I bet that's still 180 bushel corn, even on a dry year. And they were saying this is the driest it's been since 2012. Um, this is not the driest it's been for us, but here's a look at what the corn here is. So that's a big year. Let me open it up for you guys and show you because this is all done. There's, that's what the ears look like. Um, and down in here is actually a wet spot. So the corn gets a little taller, but it's all burnt. It's, it's completely gone. Yeah, none of this, all of this stuff has to be chopped. There's no ears. It should have already been chopped to be honest. But this is the farm's corn. And as you know, I've stepped away from the farm and I'm not looking back. Some people have said, oh, they'll come crawling back the last get to chop. Money. Money's not what I'm after. Um, yeah, it helps in life. But I have dignity. I have pride. And yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it. So I'm not going to have somebody come crawling back and use me for what I can do. So the farm's actually, they're working on their pull type chopper. And they've been doing so for weeks. It is what it is. They got one truck, they got a pull type. I guess if they're chopping stuff like this, it's not gonna matter because chain heads really don't pick up low stuff like that. So I still gotta get my chopper ready because I do have somebody to chop for. Um, but as you see, there's, there's a little ups and downs, but this is what 50%, maybe more of the corn looks like as far as it's got some roll, but that's about it. Um, yeah it flat out it's it it sucks but i did the best i could this spring and the weather shut off and then well we have this everything came unraveled so it's not my headache any longer but still showing you guys this is drought corn that stuff in iowa that yeah they're in a drought it's still kicking along but they have eight inches of topsoil here you got four not even and they got more than eight and then they got clay underneath but alrighty 
Figured I'd show you guys what drought corn really looks like. Mine was just, mine's just a freak drought. It's dry soil over there, but. Alrighty, let's dive into it. We got a plenty of things to do. We're back. What'd we get today? Well, I'll be honest. I stopped at Fleet Pride earlier and they had some trouble with the shocks and I could find them online. Or I found them on a internet thread of our models. And he's like, hey, the book stops at 70, 75. Like, oh. So I stopped there and I did get one front brake because they had one, they only had one. But, and I should have just went to Fleet Pre or uh, Springer Builders first. Springer Builders had one. I should have got one there first, got two of them. So, now I got two different ones, but it's not like that matters actually, but this looks like a better product to be honest. I should look back at what it costs. Assembled in Mexico. It doesn't say, does it? Nope. So, brake chambers on the front. Then I was like, yo. Well, I went to Spring Rebuilders for the shocks, which I should have went there first. They have, they're top notch. Because I was like, yo, uh, I walked in, I was like, can you get this? He's like, let me clean it up on the wire wheel. And uh, he cleaned it up on the wire wheel. Keep in mind, this is after I went to my day job. So I went to the shop, I went and looked at a farm. And uh, so, yeah, did my day job. I'm back, it's like 5.30, 6 o'clock now. And them guys are awesome. And he's like, what's this on? I'm like a 70, uh, 74 Mac. And he's like, oh. He's like, there's a lot of rust on it. So the one that were on it, they were not gas, they were something else he's, he was saying. And they're smart people. And I was like, yeah, I was in for those uh, brake drums a while back. And he's like, those expensive ones? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, those ones. And he's like, I was like, figured I got a whole new truck now. And they're chuckling about it. So I showed them the truck and they're like, all right. So they were struggling, but part number switched from, they had a part number, they switched. So they were 60 series Monroe shocks in there. And the new ones are 65s or something. These boxes that they pulled off the shelf, they had been there quite a long time. Yeah, oh no, gas 60 series, 66 the starting number is. So they wiped these boxes down and they were just dust, but there we go. So the old one, and when I take off the other side, I'll see it, I'll show you. The old one's like, it had nothing. New ones look good. Um, hopefully that helps the front end ride a little, cushions it a little bit more. Um, but it's the fact, they, the fact they got them. I love it. So let's throw those on, we'll do the brake cans. We got both sides. Um, and we got to figure out the air leak, but everybody already left past my brother's guys when I was looking at that corn. Um, and Yanko doesn't have long enough feet to reach the pedals. Let me throw this in. This isn't too bad. It's spring loaded. Well, it's loaded. So that is why they're like that. But as you see, you can push it down and then we'll get it in there. Just gonna, we're gonna cut that after. Good idea. Let it spring up a little bit. There we go. All righty. Have to give it a little tappy tappy. There we go. Actually, it's on there long enough. We can. They will clean up. Maybe we'll put a little bit of paint on them. No, we're not doing any more arts and crafts for a little bit. You guys are right. Hot damn, I still can't get enough. I do gotta get these covers. So, or figure out, yeah. Maybe we'll just swap it out. I don't know. We gotta figure it out. So these are in, all adjusted. 
Got grease on all the points I can get to. Shock is in. Um, other side, the brake can, well, service can is what they're really called. That's in. That's all adjusted. Got all the grease points. The grease I got, I didn't even realize it. I kind of like switching up grease because then I know if I've used it. Well, if that fitting's greased all the way or... Um, I got it at Tractor Supply the other day. It's Shell Rotella, which... It's extreme temperature tacky grease. Grease for on and off-road vehicles and equipment that exposed and wet... Especially exposed in wet and equipment, especially exposed in wet applications. I don't think it's supposed to be and, I think it's in wet applications. So, not not exactly wet, wet applications, but it's definitely tacky, which is cool. I know George Clyde's got some grease that they use on the crusher, some red grease, and it's stupid money, but... He says it's the best stuff and he knows when somebody says oh yeah i greased it and they didn't because is there grease in there i don't think yeah maybe um because he's the only one with that grease so yeah now we can get the front the king pens there's this grease thing somewhere in here it's over here and we can change the shock on the other side. I am rocking the Milwaukee grease gun, which I'm very pleased that I found. Well, I always said I'd buy one if I saw them in the store, and then I never see them in the store. And finally, at Granger, they had them on sale a few weeks back, and I was like, yes, sir, I'll get one. Oh. <clears throat> We got it on the low setting because the king pins um, on the other side, they were extremely tight and didn't want to let grease through. What are we doing here? That's the wrong one. There we go. Clean it up a little bit. There we go. Now it's good. Only red tools. Red trucks, red tools. Green equipment. Yeah. Throw this bad boy on. The other side, I didn't actually have to hold the back. I wonder if this one will be just as bad as... Just like previously, it doesn't want to split. Grab the pickle fork. Put you guys somewhere here. Previously it was in the dark, so I apologize about that. But I need a film crew to like follow me around and hold the camera. Yanko already went in the van. I opened the door for a second, he was like, I'm out. Oh, that is a that's beautiful. The bottom's fighting me though too. That one's not as easy to... Different angle. It's a different angle for sure. Yeah. Um. Alrighty. Yep, definitely gonna come off as two different pieces. Oh, so I'll have to cut the other one off. Ow. So yeah, the bushing stayed in there. Maybe we can chisel it and get it popped around so we don't have to cut nothing. Yeah. Junk. It should have already sprung itself all the way open. That's why these other ones have that green ring around them. 
go over here. So, let me show you. These ones have this green piece that holds them together. See? Ready? Pushes back out. Those are good. Let me get that uh, bushing off. I'll throw those on. That actually split apart really well. I can split down the middle. But I gotta work it back and forth a little bit. I was hammering it back and forth and it's free enough that... Oh, I guess it's not free enough. Hot damn. Alrighty, I might have to work it back and forth with a chisel. Just had enough rust to uh, make it stay on. So I split it and had to work it back and forth. Go in our junk pile here. All the brake cans and random stuff. Let's throw this bad boy on. Alrighty. If you put your bottom one on first. Yeah. And then, when you cut it, well actually, what I did last time, push it down. Take it off and it slowly goes up. Put your top one. Use your hand as a hammer because that's always a good thing. I know, I know, I know. I'm trying to take better care of myself. Cut that. I wonder if they got a manufacturing date on this. Oh, 218. Yeah, so they're not that old. They've just been collecting dust. Because, well, how many R models are really left out there? How many new plastic trucks are there? Yes, I know the R model's gonna last longer. They'll still be kicking when uh, those Volvos and... You ready to go? Yeah, this spring is absolutely sh junk. So, so little things like that that's gonna get us ahead some. Gotta wax this thing. This thing is gonna pop once we wax it. We might have to touch up a little bit of paint on some spots, but not like we were doing before. Maybe some point, but a little wax. And I have thought about doing a new drop plate on the back here. Not putting a pintle or nothing on it as of now. But have something come clean it up waiting on mud flaps clean it up rewire it and put some nice lights in it those well that needs to get changed anyways i do have one sitting over there but it's just it's not pretty it's not pretty at all so i know pretty doesn't pay the bills but it does look a lot nicer when you're running down the road and at the end of the day it's about pride there is some pride involved in it the metal, some wiring, some lights really ain't gonna break the budget. Alrighty. So, 740. Still light out. I guess we're gonna go. So last night, I didn't get, I didn't even finish editing vi video or nothing, and doing everything till like 11:30. So I didn't crunch any numbers. So I'm gonna get out of here, go crunch some numbers. I did talk to FSA today. Got that ball rolling. Yes, it takes some time. Somebody previously, or in a comment, said, oh, you don't have any line of credit. Um, alrighty. I don't have a line of credit for my business. Yes, but I got my equipment, my pickup, my trucks. Like, I got stuff. Financially, if we end up moving, yes, it's going to be a struggle. But at the end of the day, struggles make for better content, to be honest. And I'm fine with having a struggle. I just don't want to struggle for somebody else's dream. And honestly, I think this is my dream. It's definitely a step in the right direction um, of where I want to be for the future. So, do I feel like I'm getting used? No. No. Do I think that's what it is? No. But at the end of the day, on 
a lease agreement needs to be professionally done so that neither side feels that way and so that there's no gray areas and we both agreed on that so i'm still working on that stuff i got a lot to do so all right truck is here um waiting on stuff for it but not really that much more i want to do on it oh we got to figure out that air valve but we do need we do need two people for that so we can have somebody press it down um but yeah been a good day so we're gonna get out of here short video for you guys um give you a rundown of what's going on not everybody's gonna be long because yeah we're working on a day job and i got quite a bit of things to do um but i get back and i guess i could film me doing paperwork but who the hell would want to watch that so it is what it is we're gonna get these tires on this tire actually was going flat we got it good now chopper tire is still aired up that's good so we're gaining on some stuff we got to pull that hay head off before the end of the week and get the corn head on and start going through that that is my goal i do have a lot of work to do as my day job but Alrighty, appreciate you guys watching along even the short videos giving me comments helping me out making sure i'm uh i'm thinking straight at points giving me different ideas and i appreciate everybody who's reached out to me who actually lives in the area that i was at and has given me insight of the area prices of doing things um ideas um the pig barns hauling stuff um and hydras things that i just don't know enough about so i appreciate you guys and i'll see you guys on the next one have a good one